Good day ladies and gentlemen, so Domination has came out. Without further ado, a new let's play I'm about to start as the Ottomans. I'm planning to do a let's play of all the major nations that's gotten a rework starting by the Ottomans. And tomorrow would be Ming China, after tomorrow Japan, and so on and so forth. But Continuing with England, uh, Castile, uh, France, and maybe Aragon. It would be one part of the series every day, starting with today. So, the Ottomans, major rework, you say, huh? Got about 4k plus hours in the game, about 3,500 of them are the Ottomans. So, without further ado, let's call it Osman Lee. Imperatorolu. Yep, 1.35. The Sublime Ottoman State. The same description, same religion, same government, environment, yep. So, what do we have in here right from the bat? 5% discipline, Taurus of Heathens, okay, same, same, same. The last one I checked, the Ottomans, it was the Dev Diary, so I've missed lots of what the YouTubers or the devs had to offer in their viewing of the mission tree of the Ottomans, which is very expensive. Right, what can we do right off the bat in terms of missions? 10 galleys? Yep, we go to the Merchant Guild, get ourselves indebted to the Merchant Guilds, and do the early spam galleys strat, or the opener, as the Ottomans, to dominate the Eastern Mediterranean. Whoop, and that's it. 38 force limit. Oh, sorry. 38 out of 25 force limit. Right, at least 10 galleys and <laughs> 50 provinces with Pasha. <laughs> Decisions and enforce the Defshirme and then Siwas. 47 to convert to our faith, but if we do this, enforcing religious unity, it would take only 32. <laughs> Local arrest of 4.4, but we assign a Pasha. Uh, it would give us no local unrest reduction. <laughs> but plus 10 tolerance of heathens instead. So let's see, check our heathen map mode. Religious map mode. There's no heathen map mode. Let's just assign Pasha's. I mean, 20% minimum local autonomy. Call me a masochist, but I'm gonna check it out if whether it's worth it or not. <laughs> Governing cost minus twenty percent, even or on Sunni lands and state maintenance. <laughs> well, it may not be wise to just assign pashas to your whole country and getting thus getting twenty percent minimum local autonomy. It may not be the wisest thing to do. May or may not. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, generals at least two. <laughs> Ten Janissaries. Easy peasy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They need to reinforce. Alright, uh, train the Janissaries. The Janissaries were formed during the reign of Mar II in 1365 and were recruited from the strongest sons of our Christian subjects. Every five years, the loyal servants of the Sultan 
scour our realm to find th these sons and take them for the Genesis Core. The time of a new wave of recruits is real once again. Why? Are they fighting Ukraine? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, Janus, for example, 10% morale of armies. Uh, and some loyalties. Refill the Artas, 90% force limit. The Battle of Fauna, like literally yesterday, was a crucial victory for us, but its aftermath can still be felt. The casualties our troops suffered were heavy and many of our orders. The battalions of our great armies are incomplete and lack new soldiers. We should build up our army and recover our losses so we can continue with our expansions once again. Permanent claim over Turkish province in Anatolia and Mashrik. Why Mashrik you ask? Because Aintab is Turkish but in the Mashrik, you know. That's why I take it. Yep, permanent claims. Back in the day, he used to start the game with cores on up until Erzurum, as I recall. Back in the day, freaking Akunlo was turquoise and Kara was this color, the color color of Fadl or Samsche. Anyway, <laughs> conquer the Balix. Yep. Two privileges to the Janissaries. Let's get ourselves land leader shock. Sultan appointed Agas. <laughs> this will co would cost five crown land, so nope, not yet. Draconic training. Ooh. So the training of the Janissaries is designated to be rough and forces them to be highly disciplined. While for normal soldiers the methods seem draconic, they are necessary to ensure the readiness of the Janissaries. 5% Disciplino, yes please. <laughs> oh my god, so much, so much to do here. <laughs> this I'm gonna save it for later. Recruitment my by merit. Professional janitor. What is our equilibrium like? Sixty percent. Sorry, forty-two. Huh? So definitely gonna go for standardized salaries. Loyalty to the Sultanate. No effect. So now we sit at 72 equilibrium. Janissary celibacy, nope. Reinforced cost and regiment drill loss. Infantry combat. <laughs> mm. Not gonna give the Janissaries any more land, I think, or not to buff them like the Umara, the Umara are buffed. So I'm not gonna go for this privilege just yet. Maybe later when I change my mind in chapter 36 of this series. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> Let's go for the strict. Defshirme system for local manpower in even provinces a local defensiveness. I'm gonna leave this one open. Janissary privileges. So most of our army are levies whose loyalty is to the nobility. Really? The Janissaries are different though as their servitude is meant for the Sultan and the Sultan only. However, this obedience comes with a price as these soldiers have their own agendas and wish to be rewarded. So we get a new event. The event has the following effects. Event inside. I like this insight that they've added. Gain 25 mil power and general loyalty for 100 years until the decadence start to tick in. Special and force limit 10%, loyalty 10%. Okay. So the Ottoman army was traditionally mainly composed of cavalry. In the mid 14th century, Orhan the first and later on his son, Moad the first, introduced the Janissaries, an elite force whose loyalty is abound only to the Sultan. Formed from prisoners of war and slaves, the Janissaries went on to become the backbone of the Ottoman army, regularly paid and highly disciplined. Over time, the Janissaries grew in power and influence, 
over the state as the sultans relied more and more on their services. Nowadays, they have their own warrior class in Ottoman society and can demand significant privileges if left unchecked. Well, we're not gonna let them unchecked, promise. But in the end, they are just another chess piece on the board. <laughs> the guns of urban. Mill advisor at least skill level 2. Actually, do we get urban uh, via event? Um, I cannot recall it. Crimean destiny. Uh, let's ally the Crimea river right from the back. Matter of fact, let's do our states. First of all, we stab up. That's how we do. Second of all, do we focus on Aden or no? I'll decide later. Religious state. Clerical advisory council. Freedom of interpretation. Towards Sufism, I see. <laughs> Clerical inwards focus. Ha! Huh. Interesting. Yeah, religious diplomats. Opinion of same religion plus 10 only. Grant local residents to scholar. I go to the Hanbali school and establish religious schools. So the dude doesn't cost us any admin power. And we'll leave one slot open. Or we go for clerical ministers. Nah. We sit with an equilibrium of freaking 34. <laughs> We have a game. We have a game. Development of temples. Hmm. Five percent if all if a mosque is in the province. Recruit minister, clerical education, reform ha. Huh. Reform progress, oh my goodness. So much to do. Right of donations. Institutionalized ulema. Hmm. Religious delegation. If the Ulama state gains 10 loyalty, automatically complete the state agenda if the Ulema is active. Okay, clerical education. I might go for clerical education, but I need more equilibrium, like, come on, I'm not gonna summon diets and go for the proposal of the Ulema all the time. Stability, at least three, I mean, come on, with such proposals. What? The Umero want the Byzantium as a subject of the Ottomans? <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> Galibolu 3 Production, Dimi 30 Autonomy, Janissaries Conquer Lesbo. Uh, really? Let's go for the Dimi. <laughs> Let's go for the Dimi. Where was the Autonomy? Here. Yep. Increase it. I'm gonna leave the slot open, I mean, come on. 34 equilibrium, this is gonna be... <laughs> it comes to the Imara, the one mil. Aristocratic counselors, supremacy of the supplant pot. Now we sit at, at an equilibrium of 44.7 by the Ulema. Expand the fortifications. Um... <laughs> Buffing forts and ramparts. Statesman of the Umira. Recruit a minister. Grant court positions. Huh. Prestige decay. Umira right for diet call. Hmm. <laughs> estate decision. It gives an estate decision. Umira force conscription. Umira officer rights. 
Gena General scales with tradition, which is 16.9. <laughs> 6 nice. Uh, let's get a free general, I think. Now fulfill another agenda, another mission, I mean. Where is it? We did have a mission of having at least two generals. Number of generals, at least two. Yeah, it's for aftermath of a crusade. Umira grant generalship. So those are the state decisions. Oh, we gain another general with 40 tradition. Don't we start with Harim Shaham Din? Yes, and when we click, we get our general. Our second general. Abdul Hamid Juhadar. Not bad, but not good either. Right. Four out of six. Increase levies, no. Right of council, no. Monopolies, not yet. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. Force conscription. Hmm. <laughs> right for diet call. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm gonna leave it for later. When it comes to the merchant guilds. Go with the bird mana, seize land, of course the Muragana rebel. Patronage of the arts. Commercial advisory board. What else? <laughs> City expansion privileges. Grant control over the coinage. Allow merchant guilds economic freedom. Hmm. Merchant Guild's Forced Draft. Naval School Rights. Gives an Admiral. Yeah. This one's pretty good. I think. Grant more Monopoly Charters. Financial Demand. Promote Merchant Guild. Guild's Bookkeeping. Yep, I'm gonna go for this one. Already sitting at, at 6. But only 5k rebels. Okay. The Dimmi. When it comes to the Dimmi. Let's start from down under. Dimmi Contribution Act. Um, <laughs> My goodness. 35 cur current loyalty. Protected Dimmi communities. Plus 33% religious unity. Oh. Uh Leaders without upkeep plus one. Reform progress. Yep. Grand trading privileges. Trader. Development of communities. Dimmi liberties. Max promoted culture. It costs five crown land though. Tolerance of heathens plus two. What else? Higher Dimmi taxes. Yep, I think that's it for now. When it comes to the Umara again, the Umara. What was the reform growth? Was it by the Ulema? I think. Oh, I cannot. Not granted state privilege, promote Dimmi education. Oh, you cannot have both at the same time, both giving plus 10% reform progress growth. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Let's give the Mara right for diet call. Should have done it before. Before we seize the land. What else? I'm gonna leave a slot open. Dimmies. <laughs> Max promoted cultures. Tolerance of heathens. I'm tempted to do this, but Cranland is. Very low, very low crown land. Hmm, 
<laughs> oh my god, so much to so much to read, really. Uh <clears throat> Yeah, where where were we? Special units need to reinforce. The rest to go and attack the rebels. Also, I think we might gonna get the victor over the Vana Crusade soon, you know? Soon, which means we need to get ready for our war with the Byzantines. Ah yes, one admiral please. Umera called Diet. Oh, they're loyal, but the merchant guilds are not. Huh? Wait. Oh, it's because I recruited a... an admiral. Ah, yes. I gotcha. Transport stay at port. Jalaluddin Ohrili. Are you from Ohrid? Go to Sea of Marmara. Sail, not go. Uh, defeat the Mamluks. Uh, address a Furman. What is it? Granada Moriscos have been expelled from Iberia. Uh, okay. Implement the Siasa. Jogson of the armies. Kanuname, Second Islamic Golden Age. Uh, <laughs> Navy Doctrine. Great Turkish Navy. Hmm. So the might of our fleet is in its is in its numbers for each boat the enemy fields on the sea, the Turkish Navy shall bring three <laughs> it rhymes naval force limit 20 percent ship cost 10 percent should have known before i recruited or built those ships so let's cancel enact the doctrine and then build them again thus saving 10 percent min maxing with red shake welcome to my channel please like and subscribe Galleys. Now they cost only nine. You see, you see. Optimization. Min maps. Min maxing at its peak. Also, cannot build in Galibolu because it's under siege. Yeah. Close. <laughs> So much to do, man. So much to do. To do. When it comes to the, to the advisors, the boring three choices of the advisors always. Um, 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 the scripted Ali Al Kushji. Also get ourselves improved relations. And a uh, national mon power, mon power, manpower. To get the early cannons we deserve. The guns of Orban, not Victor. <laughs> anyway, the Hungarian engineer Victor Orban and Aaron founder has reached out to us. He is offering us his services and knowledge to create cannons, which would be the downfall of the walls of Babylon itself. We must make sure that we get access to his siege weapons. So we get four, four cannons, Exclu ex exclusively for pushing sieges due to their sizes. And if you complete this mission by hiring Urban and before military technology 5, we will get the following bonus Early Guns of Urban. Attila cost minus 100%. Oh, I think we, we are gonna wait for the event then. Also, new soundtrack. Oh, Chinese music. What's called? We're drawing the map. French music, general music. Oh, why, 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 why they in blue? Why? <laughs> I have no mods on, by the way. It's vanilla. I like these combinations of bundles of songs. Songs of war, not active. Songs of regency. I don't think I have mods on. Ottoman music, redrawing the map. I think it's mod. It's mod. I'm not sure though. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
in the comments down below when you comment please like and subscribe oh yes rivals let's get ourselves hungary venice because they're the soonest we gotta get land from them and mamluks just so i could scornfully insult them right off the bat where is it yep the Hungarians and the Venetians cannot embargo them because we have a, a truce. A truce? Yeah, a truce. By the way, title of Khalifa. Yeah, not sure about that. Uh, maybe later. Later, later. Also, ally Tunis. Oh, yuck! Tlemcen. By the way, they got the color of Portugal and Portugal got the color of Tlemcen. Oh yeah, it's ugly. But Portugal is beautiful though. It reminds me of the color of Portugal and House of Iron 4. Which I'm about to, to do some videos ab uh, about. In the channel. In the future. So, can we actually unpause? <laughs> the siege engineer Orban. Okay, Victor Orban was an iron founder engineer from the Hagia province of Brasso. What is Brasso? Brasso, where's Brasso? I don't know. Where is Brasso? As one of the pioneers of siege engineering and artillery construction, he made a living based on his weapons of war. In 1444, Urban tried his luck with the Byzantine Emperor, but they were broke. But as they could neither afford his salary nor possess the materials necessary for construction such cannons, Urban saw himself forced to turn to the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II Fatih. He promised to create a cannon big and potent enough to blast the walls of Babylon itself. The walls of Babylon itself, you say. So he joins my court. So we lose 97 ducats. Not for hiring him, just for inviting him to, to the court. Or we cannot afford his services. Ah, uh, yes, we can afford, man. We can afford and we will hire you, man. Actually, cannot. I need to wait one more, one more month. And then we enact the. We'll complete the mission. Okay, Poland went with the Jagiellon. Can we ally the French right from the bat? Yes, we can. Yes, please. Also, one diplomat goes with threatening countries. What's our force limit? Uh, our combat with like um, 20. Okay. 11th of December. We hire Urban. Wait, hold. The victor of the Ivan Crusade. 25 pp, 100 splendor. Peace has again fallen over the Balkans with the defeat of the Christians at the Battle of Vana. Our Sultan's dearest father, Murat, answered his son's call to arms to defend us from these invaders. He has achieved a great victory, though at no small cost. Casualties at the battle were heavy on both sides, and our soldiers will need time to recover from the battering they have received. However, the Christians have come out of the fight in far worse state, with Vladislav III of Poland, Hungary and Lithuania dead. Both Poland and Hungary find themselves in the chaos of an interrenium. Inshallah, their misfortunes will continue. Our victory has shaken Europe and the Christendom to their very core, and all tremble before the might of the sublime Ottoman state. None will dare lift a finger as we sweep our way through the Balkans. Serbia will be ours, Wallachia will be ours, the Albanians will be brought to heel and Skanderbeg will be killed like the dog he is. The great prize also will be ours, the city of the world's desire, the dice cast. So the aftermath of Varna, with the scattering of the infidel crusader host at Varna, we have broken the last significant resistance to our continuing expansion of our holdings in Rumelia. Rumelia, I think it's the province of southern Bulgaria or northern Bul Bulgaria. One of the two. It was called like this under the Ottoman rule. Let us gather our forces and prepare our conquest of the remains of a pathetic crumbling empire. Yep. So 11th of December. We declare on the Byzantines. No allies just yet. Oh, sorry. 
missed my time. Now they are the Moldovans. Go for guns of Victor Orban. Get ourselves the guns. Marry the Crimea rivers. Take Constantinople. Also, Janissaries. Um, I'm gonna let them reinforce, I think. Like, come on. Are you fighting well? Okay, in Constantinople, leave 10 dudes. With the siege artillery. And here we leave four dudes. Go to Corinth. Cannot move. Uh, bring six dudes plus one. Or actually, let's do something like this. Six dudes to Moria. The poor of Amazio. Oh, hold up, hold up. Ten prestige, yep. Got ourselves two new ships. Right off the bat. Hey, Moldavia. Storming into Toljo and Silistri. You think you have uh, Mihai by your side? Yeah, 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 you don't have it. I mean him. What a barrage on Constantinia. Make the prophet proud. Oh, we could go straight for uh, the capital. No, only Berlad. I don't remember Basarabia had a fort from the start of the game. <laughs> By the way, dear viewer, if it's one of your mods, music mods, I'm gonna give you some love in the description. No worries, but I don't think I have activated any mods. I'm not sure if it's vanilla or a mod. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's siege Basarabia, why not? Siege is going well. Let's spy on the Byzantines. To increase our siege speed. Also... Let's move the dude in Alexandria, the trader or the merchant to Constantinople and go with uh, improve inland routes because we have 50 plus percent of the trade node it gives us siege ability 10 percent artillery levels available is force plus one now watch this watch 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 it's 64 percent Okay. Something happened? No? Is there an effect? You see? And it fell. You see? The power of uh, traders, I guess. Let's get uh, those... Uh, cannons down under. To Athena, my friend. Also, let's siege. Uh, blockade the poison. Not gonna barrage because 50 is, is a lot. Also, when we get Miltech 4, we focus on admin. Rotate the general.
By the way, in this one, I'm not going for the achievement. Man has ambition just yet, because it's like hardcore, like seriously. In this last let's play, I'm gonna recreate the historical Ottoman borders following the mission tree and just having a chill, enjoyable Ottoman game. <laughs> Oh, mission fulfilled. The Crescent Fleet. Yes, please. The first name of our great sultanate was established in 1323 after capturing the town of Karamursel. Ever since our navy has been growing. Yet our rivals on the sea, such as the last Knights Hospitala, the Genoese Trade Republic and the Duges of Venice are still a threat to our security. Building up our fleet is of great priority if we do not want to fall behind our enemies. We get an Admiral Fifth Tradition. Yep. Too late, but yeah. Is it better than mines? No, mines is better. Mines is bigger. Mines is of higher quality. Now get our galleys to blockade. To continue the blockada. De Mare Mediterranea. <laughs> also, we like manpower. Why you ask? Because we are sieging with freaking janitories. Let's not siege with, with freaking Janissaries. Let them reinforce in Edirne. Merchant fleet, you go and uh, protect trade in uh, Aleppo, I guess. Talented judge, level 2 statesman. Stop! This one, Korkunsari. Hey, Moldavia, wanna be my vessel? I think I'm gonna... Oh, I cannot vessel as you. 110. Ah. 110 because... His uh, total war score, 55%. 110 is because he's not co-belligerated. Why not co-belligerated? Because we have a, a truce. Why do we have a truce? Because they participated in the Varna Crusade. Why did they participate in the Varna Crusade? Yeah, the Pope promised them some stuff, some booty. Another transport ship. Let's destroy their fleet. Or actually grab the, those ships. Board them. Next one, the chopping block is, uh, oh, Eperos, allied with Karaman. Hmm. And Janda, allied with Dulkadia, who is allied with Ramazan. Okay, this, this is the next war. The guilds and fraternities. Alright, all galleys at the ready, you go. And siege Bessarabia. I wanna white piece them. I don't wanna I don't want anything from the Moldavians. Transport ships. Let's get our siege engines ready. Oh, just as I mentioned Bessarabia, it fell. Wanna give me some uh, money, Miss Moldavia? Yep. What is this? Point one seven one. What is this? <laughs> okay. Cancel the spy network. And fully annex the last remnants of the Eastern Roman Empire. Come on, give me all your money. Finito. And just like that, we move Constantinople. We move it, actually make it our capital. And we fulfill a mission. Seed of the world's desire. 
So the Byzantine Empire is a mere husk of its former glory. Once rulers of the east from the Danube to the Nile, they are now nothing but a crumbling state sunk in internal conflicts. Their only stronghold, the great capital Constantinople, is all that is left of their power. Today the city shall fall before the might of the Ottomans and become the grand jewel of the house of Osman and our new empire. Event in sight hmm, of the great capital Constanti Constantini. Tons of true faith, legitimacy, base tax, production manpower, local death, devastation, yep. The great capital Constantini, oh my god. The walls are breached, the gate has fallen, and the gem of the once mighty Roman Empire is now in our possession. The magnificent Padishah ordered his troops to spare the once prosperous metropolis from further sacking and raising as he has plans for it. The walls will be restored, the houses renovated, and the seat of power moved to Constantinia. Alongside these many efforts to bring the new capital of the Ottomans to the glory it once had, the government under Mehmed II Fatih's supervision resettles many from the land to the capital. This population influx has brought many men of talent, artisans, architects, and artists prime among them. With the skill of these men and the guiding hand of Al-Padisha, the capital is entering a new golden era. Constantinia, Constantinia will once more be the pearl of the Mediterranean. This shall be the beginning of the classical era. And that was it for this today's episode, for episode 1 of the Grand Campaign de la Ottoman. In next episode, we're gonna consolidate Anatolia and push into the Balkans. Push, push, push. This has been the Red Shake. I'm so excited to play the Ottomans. If you like this series so far and wanna see more, please like and sub subscribe. Peace!